the Venus feature North Korea or the lack of it. Okay, so I've got a map of North Korea, as you can see, it's like little island there, the arrow's pointing to. And on this map, um, the yellow regions are free, the green is partly free, and the purple is not free. Um, North Korea has a population of over 25 million. Their press is not free, and they have a freedom rating of 7 out of 7, which 5 out of 5 might be good, but 7 out of 7 is bad. It's not free. And their current president is Kim Jong il. And I put a few laws here, even though I'll be going on about them um, in a bit more in depth later. But just so you get the gist of things, there's um, a one party regime um, who own all the media. The reporting is sanctioned by the government, and unauthorised broadcasts are considered a crime against the state. And just a quick thing here about reporters that borders ranked at 178 out of 179, only beaten by North, uh, Eritrea, which I think we went on about earlier. Okay, so um, I just wanted to start about like how everything happened. So Kim Il Sung was the president, and he got elected in 1948, um, just when the Democratic People's of Republic of North Korea was established. Um, he was elected into power. It says here he was a driving force behind the majority of repressed media freedom in North Korea. A former anti-Japanese resistance fighter, and he was elected to power in 1948, shortly after North Korea established themselves. In 1950, he instructed North Korea to invade South Korea, which drew in the United States and China, obviously not to help them, they were against them, um, which was an attempt to reunify the peninsula under the communist rule. In 1953, the three-year conflict ended with a ceasefire rather than a full peace treaty, which basically means the war is still going on, it hasn't actually fully ended. Um, the war actually resulted in a death of at least 2.5 million people, and since then, the two Koreas have been on a continuous war footing, and the border remains one of the most heavily militarised places in the world. In 1955, he solidified his control after setting up labour camps, and surprisingly was given the title of the Great Leader. Um, he, con he consigned thousands of political prisoners to labour camps, and he adopted an extreme personality cult that promoted him as the Great Leader. In 1956, anti-Kim elements encouraged, were encouraged in the Soviet Union and he insisted a purge, executing anyone who'd been found guilty of treason and forcing them into exile. And in 1990, um, North Korea basically became isolated from the outside world. There was limited trade, but only so they could survive. Although he was still praised by the media and all the people in North Korea as uh, the great leader. And, but sadly, in 1990, well not so sadly, in 1994, he died at the age of 82. Um, the presidency was succeeded to his son, and now it's succeeded to Kim, Kim Jong-il, <laughs> the president who has lots of bombs and wants to kill everyone. Okay, so about the press freedom in there, there's one TV channel in North Korea which is owned by the government, although there is illegal smuggling of stolen footage. But it says up here, you get whatever like is selected in baggy coats. You don't get DVDs, you don't see Fast and the Furious, you won't see Pirates of the Caribbean, anything like that. It really is people who have put hidden cameras on their coats and have recorded their day-to-day -day lives. That's basically all you get. Um, there's televisions and radio programs that are smuggled in from um, South Korea and Seoul. Um, and there's a commonly thrown about word in there called reptile media, which is basically um, some people have propositioned that foreign broadcasters, because they have North Koreans hanging on their every word, are attempting to tear down the government from the inside. And along with this, um, there's been a lot of talk about this man called Tom Coyner, who has basically said that although they have attempted to tear down the inside from like, different radio stations coming in from South Korea and Seoul, they can't really do it because South Korea, I mean, North Koreans don't really have any concept of basic human rights. So you can't tell them that their, their human rights are being like, ripped down, their fundamental human rights are being ripped down by um, Kim Jong-il and everyone like that, because they don't know what they are. So reptile media, although it is about, it doesn't really have a leg to stand on. Okay, some brief punishments. Um, members of security have um, committed serious crimes and human rights abuses, including, including extrajudicial killings, Fair disappearances, arbitrary detention, and death penalty. Political prisoners are consigned <coughs> to a harsh and threatening life prison conditions that include forced abortions and infanticide. And aside from that, 
you have so a system of social discrimination which is based on their family's perceived loyalty to the regime. All citizens are classified into, oh, it's gone wandering, um, core, wavering, and hostile, which is basically their perceived loyalty to the regime. And this rating determines every facet of a person's life, including employment, educational opportunities, place of residence, access to media facilities, and even access to stores. Um, there was a talk in 1994 about possibility of ending the death penalty. Basically, North Korea wanted to have something over the US. They wanted to say that they were better than them in something, so they decided to end it. However, Kim Il Sung's death intervened, and there's going to be no other plans to giving up executions. Now, there have been a lot of imprisonments of journalists in North Korea. However, when trying to find out this, my computer got shut down by a firewall and locked for two hours. So, <laughs> I didn't go much further than looking for American citizens that have been there. These two people, um, Laura Lin and Yuna Lee, from the US, they were travelling and they travelled from China into North Korea without a visa. Um, it came out that they were journalists for current TV, so they were detained and sentenced to 12 years hard labour. However, after a period of, I think it was like eight months, um, the former US President Bill Clinton arrived in the country on an unannounced visit and they were released. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.